Before the internet, one platform was king, and that was the magazine. They have pages filled to catch your eye, like tools, inventions, and things to buy. They would always educate, entertain, and inspire. All you needed to do was submit your subscription flyer. I have stacks and stacks of all this history, so let's open one up and uncover the mystery. Let's take a look at Popular Mechanics, March of 1963. It has this cool speedboat on the cover. I wanna take a look at that inside here. Looking at what was happening in 1963. I wasn't born yet, but there's always something interesting in here that I have a laugh at. Yeah, I just love looking at the old advertisements. More fun than you can shake a stick at. Learn meat cutting. It's just fun, this was YouTube before YouTube. These days are kind of long gone of advertising like this. On the market, 1963. Bicycle engine kit. These are on eBay right now, selling for like 200 bucks. Nothing is ever new. As you can tell, we were extremely fascinated with space travel. Look at that thing. Fuel cells, electricity, and a promising new package. Take a look at this. Pets ride high, $9.95. If you saw somebody driving with their pet sitting on the top seat, about ready to fall off, you'd get the cops called on you. <laughs> what is this? An accordion tent. Folds up like this, stretches out. That's kind of interesting. Oh yeah, look at this one, another pet one. Looks like it's sticking outside the window of an apartment building with a little hole in it. <laughs> so the cat can come out and take a view. 78 bucks for that thing. Woo. That probably wouldn't fly today either. I ski at 106 miles per hour. No thanks. Now this is cool. She's water skiing behind this towable ski boat. That's pretty neat. That would be cool to find one of these today and get it working again. Now this is interesting. This is what I always love about Popular Mechanics is they always have these cool boats, hydrodynamic. Looks like we're able to build this boat. Pretty neat looking with this flat bottom. We have all the drawings to make this. If anybody's ever made this boat, leave me a comment. <laughs> uh, this one's always fun too, okay. To start a nail in place too high or to reach with both hands, press a nail through a small square of foil. Then wrap the foil tightly around the pole of the hammer in a manner pictured. They have a solution for everything. Traveling lathe oiler. I could actually probably use something like this. Yeah, I wanna oil my work. My surface finish will be nicer. I don't have to continue to wipe with a normal hand brush. I can run the lathe as needed. And when you're threading, you need both hands to run the lathe and it's kind of hard to keep it oiled at the same time. I think it's a really simple idea. Looks like we need a fruit can, a shut off valve, some wing nuts, some 3 8 drill rod, a paintbrush, and some aluminum. I'd like to try to build this with simple tools something you'd find in your garage or small workshop. So all I'm gonna need is a vise, a hacksaw, some specialty files, some drills, and something to solder with, like a blowtorch or a soldering iron. And we're gonna be diving in deep to why I'm gonna be using each tool. And I look forward to building my version 2.0 of this exact tool after we're done with the first one. So let's get started on the build. I'm using this piece of aluminum block. It's gonna be the base. And I need to make an ear in it, just like it says in the magazine. So I'm gonna do this with the hacksaw. This is a thick piece of aluminum. So in order for this to cut correctly, we want to use less teeth per inch. And this one happens to be 18. That center piece is gonna be what we're gonna be attaching the rod to. <laughs> This really makes me appreciate my mechanical tools, but I don't want anybody to ever be discouraged that they can't build something because they don't have power tools. So we got our block, we got a nice little rib exposed here, but the surface is really rough. So I wanna file this down, but we're gonna use just not a normal file. This is a file specially designed for aluminum. This tool is absolutely necessary for aluminum or also the teeth get all clogged up. The technique I'm using is I'm pushing on the forward stroke, pushing hard, but I'm just doing a light drag on the back stroke and that clears that aluminum out of that tooth. And once I get the majority of the bulk, I'll switch to a finer file. So I have the majority of the saw marks all cut out with the aluminum roughing file. I'm gonna switch to these set of preferred files so it gets coarser and finer and then you can get your surface finish accordingly. So I'm gonna switch to the number two around all the edges. The last step I wanna do the block, I'm just gonna hit it with some 220 sandpaper. 
We got the block done. Now I need to make the mast that extends from the lathe bed. I need to cut that out of 3 8 mild steel rod. So let's build that rod next. The important thing with hacksawing is to support your work as close to the jaws as possible. So this side needs to be flat. The plans say I need a hole here at the base that gets mounted to the block we just made, a hole four inches up, and then we need to turn down some threads at the end. So let's make some flat spots, which they're asking us to do with a flat file so that we can drill a cross hole right through the side of the rod. So I'm gonna make a flat spot here, make a mark there, four inches up. So I need a flat spot here and I need a flat spot here. So now I need to make sure I line up my flat spots. Those are nice. So that I got this side done, I'm just gonna flip it over and match the other. Oh man, I should have switched to the course file first. So much faster to use the right tool. Okay, so there's our rod. It's time to drill some holes about four inches apart. But before I do that, I need to make a center mark. That way my drill has a nice place to get started. So I need to drill a hole, a number seven hole for a quarter 20 thread when I go to tap this, but I need to find the center. And I'm gonna use this center finder to locate and scribe. All I gotta do, turn it 90 degrees. Please, right there's the center. Now I need to tap a hole. I should have probably tapped this hole first because this is the part where this whole part could be scrapped if this tap breaks off. But these are really good US made machine taps. I do not buy any tap that's made overseas. I found that it has wrecked way too many projects and that it's well worth spending the money on a good tap. This is a ratcheting tap handle made by General. You can just keep going straight because as you see, the thread is coming out the top. I think that's it. Woo. Crisis averted. Our part is good. We have threads in the end. Now let's cut a little piece of uh, stud and let's drive it in there. That's a little bit long, so we're gonna need to cut that off. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. So it's now time to combine the rod and the base that we just made, and I need to drill a hole that corresponds, and it looks like in the drawing, they just have the rod right to the side of this boss. So let's get a hole in there to hold the rod up. Going to be drilling the same quarter inch through hole. Look at that. I think it's time to work on the little rod that's gonna hold the paintbrush. These two flats on the end need to be 90 degrees from the other set on this small one. All right, I got the little brush part done. Now I just need to drill some holes in it. And if you're wondering what the flats are actually for, is so when the components mate, they have a nice flat surface to uh, slide and glide. I'm using some quarter 20 brass wing nuts. This is looking pretty neat. I like this lean back rake look. So now I want to add the paintbrush. And there's a couple different choices for brushes. So let me show you what I have. Natural hair brushes. These ones are synthetic, but for my case, I think I wanna stick with the natural hair that's plastic. So I think it's gonna hold up better to the oils. I think I'm gonna try to drill the hole right in between those two rivets, because I know there's probably meat there and we'll fasten it like that. And to make sure everything's all tightened up, I'm gonna use the Fireball Hex Key Kit. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Now let's talk about the top. Popular Mechanic says I need a fruit can, and it just so happens that I have some fruit here, and it is lunchtime. The can they show in the picture was nice and smooth. That would be much easier. This one has these little ridges in here, but I think we're gonna try to deal with these ridges and stick with the fruit can. Good call on the fruit can, Popular Mechanics. Have lunch and build something cool. Mm. Let's get the can cleaned out. I need to get the glue off, the wire brush. Okay. We have to make a bracket to hold this to the arm. This is eighth inch by half inch flat bar. 
that we need to solder and bend to make some sort of bracket. And you can buy this stuff at the hardware store. It's relatively cheap. This is maybe five, six bucks. So let's cut it to length, drill it, bend it, solder it. Okay, flip it around. I want all the mill skillets on this flat bar off so that I know that the solder has something to grab onto. Just like that. Now I just need to bend it. All right, I got a bent bracket. What I'd like to do is get the bracket soldered to the can, but not all solder is equal. What you really want is acid core solder. This is gonna give you the best chance for adhesion. If you try to use electrical solder, it's just not gonna work, it's not designed for it. This is what I'm gonna be using along with some flux. And I just brush it on before I go to add any heat. And this is gonna give the best chance for these two materials to combine together. Let's get this in the vise. This tool is called the grasshopper and it's gonna help me hold this nice and tight. I'm using the seam of the can to keep it square. I want the seam to be on the bracket side so it's hidden from the rest of the world. Natural reaction is to get really close with the torch and get really hot and put heat and solder at the same time in the same place. What I like to do is have a nice wide flame blanketing the whole part on the opposite side of where I apply the solder. I'm looking for this solder to flow from here to the back side. Okay, and while the solder's still hot, I can see it bubbling, I'm gonna wipe off the excess. Let's cool it off in the water. So that joint is extremely strong. We'll probably rip the can apart before that joint ever comes loose. So what I need now is to get the oil out of the can and onto the brush. The link in between that, so we just don't flow all the oil out the bottom, is this valve but I need a way to get it right there in the end. So we need to drill a hole, maybe we even solder it. So I got the hole, I tried threading it in at first, and I don't really feel confident with that. So in order to get all the oil out of the bottom of the can, I'm going to hacksaw most of the threads off and then solder that right to the bottom. So anytime you're adding heat to a valve, you want the valve open, so you minimize the heat trapped in there. Nice good solder flow right around that. That looks perfect. Let's see if it works. First test. <laughs> yes. Let's wire brush it and we're on to the next step, guys. All right. This is looking pretty popular mechanics-y, but I need a copper tube to go from here down and drip on the brush. So I'm gonna use this, which is eighth inch annealed copper, and I only need three inches. The annealed copper is easier to bend. If you don't get the annealed copper and try to bend it, it'll just crack. I think this thing is pretty nifty. I'm gonna go get it fitted and we're gonna try it out. Got the base to our little oiler here and I need to get it mounted to the lathe cross slide. And I have two holes that are already here and I just need to transfer them with this caliper to my block. Every lathe is gonna be a little bit different so you might have to make a different block to fit your lathe. I'm gonna put a chamfer bit in here and we'll be done. All right, first design flaw that I could tell with the popular mechanics plans is that my wing nut and my bolt interfere. So if I were to redo this again, I would have made this taller and not go off the plans to give yourself a little more room for the wing nut to turn. All right, let's use some uh, rapid tap. Crack it open a little bit. Okay, oh yeah, that's drippy. There's a nice good steady drip right there. Let's get a piece of material in here and we can try it out. So the idea behind this is you move this over here, get the brush where you need it. And then when I bring in my tool, lubes up the drill bit. Okay, so we got our brush wiping on our material. Look at that, wipe the oil on it. Now, isn't that just cool? I think this is a really cool idea, but I think there's a lot of improvements that could be made to this. I don't like that it's fixed to the lathe. I would like to be able to move it to machine, 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 and also be able to move it around on the lathe. I only have one axis of movement. I need it to twist, pivot, and slide. So with all those changes, I would like to try to make my own. So let's go fireball a new lathe oiler. At first thought, I wanted to use some glass containers, 
or using something like this WD-40 can because it's steel and smooth. But it doesn't matter which one I choose or make as long as it sits on top of the lathe to oil it. To oil it. To oil it. Toilet. Take a look at this. We have a genuine toilet brush on the lathe. Let me show you some of the things that I changed from the popular mechanics. The first thing at the base, I added a magnet. Now I'm able to move it and slide it around anywhere I'd like to. Traveling up the frame, I used some copper tubing and I put it into an offset S shape. And what that allows me to do is get over the edge of the cross slide, get it closer or further back just by rotating it. The next thing that I did was I used couplings on the half inch copper tubing and the couplings have just enough friction in them to stay where you want them, virtually making this a whole toolless setup. So I can slide the brush up and it stays where I put it. Uh, same with the toilet is that I can twist it and turn it wherever I want to. There's no wing nuts to have to mess with. And when you lift it, it stays because I'd like to use this on the big lathe too. So I need that extra height. And if I want the brush to be out of the way, I just pivot it backwards and I can drip directly onto the part. And then I have a little chip tray, which is the toilet lid. So it keeps the chips from falling inside the toilet seat, getting into the oil. And if for any reason this needs to be cleaned out, I can just remove it completely by sliding it 
up off the top. Clean it, do whatever I want. I didn't like the way the valve worked on the other one. The valve was a gate valve before. Pretty finicky to get dialed in with the correct drip. So I switched to the needle valve. And as you can see, it's much easier to control the flow. I can almost just count uh, one turn back and I can get the flow ratio that I would like to. And then maybe this part of the brush is getting more saturated. I could just push the toilet over and saturate another part of the brush where before I wasn't able to pivot this on the popular mechanics. I also switched brushes. I went with something with a lot more bristles all the way to the end. And this is also two inches wide. I really wanna try it. So let's cut this three quarter inch cold roll steel bar. Hope you guys enjoyed this build as much as I did. I want to continue to do more popular mechanics builds in the future. So if you like this, please let me know in the comments. I would also like for you guys to build your own lathe brush too. And tag me on Instagram. I want to see what you guys come up with. There are hundreds and thousands of different ideas that we can build off this. But hopefully this inspires you to go out and build something. And I'll see you on the next one.